Sunny Bonani, everybody. Hello and welcome to our 81st mnemonic in the exciting discipline of internal medicine. I hope you are well. I bring warm greetings in the precious name of my Lord and Savior Jesus. Today we're talking about pituitary tumors and specifically the sequence of loss of hormonal secretion when it comes to compressive pituitary adenomas. And the mnemonic is, go look for the adenoma, please. <laughs> but first, I hope you'll allow me to favor you with a few dad jokes about uh, the brain. So why are neurosurgeons so persuasive? Because they can really get inside your head. <laughs> and ever wondered where do brain surgeon students go to study? That's easy. They go to the hippo campus. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is a quick scripture to encourage you this beautiful morning. Take from the book of Psalm chapter 24, verses 3 and 4. It speaks about integrity. All right. And this is a Psalm of David. It says, David says, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. And I pray that will be the desire of our hearts to have integrity, clean hands and a pure heart. Amen. So guys, when it comes to pituitary tumors, okay, they can present in, um, in two major ways, right? Firstly, as a result of local so-called mass effect, such as headaches, visual field loss, specifically bitemporal hemianopia and loss of visual acuity and changes in pituitary hormone secretion. Now, these changes in pituitary hormone secretion include either hyperfunction or hypofunction. So hyperfunction examples are excessive growth hormone, usually acromegaly, uh, excess ACTH causing Cushing syndrome, and probably more likely excess prolactin causing secondary amenorrhea or male infertility or deficiency. All right. And... Um, symptoms of pituitary adenomas or something that you should look for or to inquire about that's like a red flag for this is you want to inquire about hormonal excess hormonal deficiencies and mass effect okay so with mass effect you ask about visual field abnormalities especially bitemporal hemianopia like we mentioned blurred vision which speaks to diminished visual acuity headaches cranial nerve palsies which will be evident on examination loss of color that is especially red discrimination right then you inquire about um deficiency of these hormones. Now, the order in which the hormone secretion is diminished in a setting or the context of pituitary adenoma is in the way of this mnemonic. So, GO speaks to diminished growth hormone, right? LOOK is diminished luteinizing hormone. FOR is diminished FSH. So, those two, that's LAH and FHF, that's luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are collectively termed the gonadotropins, right? T stands for diminished thy um, thyroid stimulating hormone. A, adenoma speaks to diminished ACTH, which is a genocorticotropic hormone. Please, prolactin goes the other way, right? Usually there's loss of tonic inhibition of prolactin secretion, and we have increased prolactin, all right? So how would growth hormone deficiency manifest? Well, uh, usually it's like nonspecific symptoms. The patients usually have obesity. Why? Because growth hormone itself is lipolytic. So when there's diminished growth hormone, you have obesity, we have diminished exercise capacity, weakness, low mood fatigue. So it's important to ask about these things on history taking, right? Diminished um, uh, cortisol uh, in the way of diminished ACTH. How will that manifest? Uh, we'll talk about that in another video, right? Cortisol excess will essentially give you Cushing syndrome. And cortisol deficiency will give you, as we know, adrenal insufficiency. Thyroid hormone deficiency will manifest with a sign of symptoms of hypothyroidism, but it will be secondary hypothyroidism. So in this specific uh, case, your TSH is down together with your T3 and T4, which are also down. Right? Um, hyperprolactinemia in females will manifest with amenorrhea, oligomenorrhea, galacteria, infertility, sexual dysfunction, and osteoporosis. Don't forget about that. And hyperprolactinemia in men will manifest with erectile dysfunction, infertility, and osteoporosis. Your gonadotropins, LH and FSH, if there's deficiency in that, you will have the situation of hypogonadism. If they're in excess, it's usually silent, sometimes with paradoxical hypogonadism. Okay, how will we investigate a patient in whom you suspect a pituitary adenoma? So your labs include prolactin level. Uh, you have to do an IGF-1 level, which is simpler than growth hormone to interpret because we know the growth hormone is released in a positive fashion. So we'd rather measure the IGF-1 than the actual growth hormone level. You want to do 
you know, the following as part of a so-called pituitary panel. So luteinizing hormone, FSH, TSH, ACTH, do your morning cortisol on a free T4 together with maybe a, a morning testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, right? But the last three are not absolutely, um, you know, inclusive in the panel. And you obviously want to image that uh, pituitary, so do an MRI of the pituitary. Special tests, uh, if you suspect acromegaly, you can do a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test. If you suspect Cushing syndrome, you're going to do an overnight dexamethasone suppression test. But we speak more about those in um, forthcoming videos. All right. So then diagnostic issues. Let's talk about microadenoma. So by definition, a microadenoma is below 10 millimeters in size on imaging. You want to evaluate for hormonal hypersecretion like we spoke of, right? Well, the macroadenoma is generally above 10 millimeters. You also want to evaluate for hormonal hyper or hyposecretion. All right. And refer to an ophthalmologist for formal visual field testing. In a situation of hyperprolactinemia, if the prolactin is less than two times the upper limit of normal, you want to repeat the prolactin level at least two more times, both at fasting and at rest, as most cases will normalize spontaneously. If you got a persistent Increase in prolactin, which is confirmed, you want to look for potential offending medications uh, because it's a big differential for hyperplastinema, which we'll cover in another video. But you want to check your pituitary function, your renal function, your liver function, your beta HCG, especially in, in females, right? Your TSH, your IGF-1 level, MRI, that pituitary, and you may want to get a macroprolactin assay as well. Okay, management issues, guys. If we're dealing with a prolactinoma, then you want to give dopamine agonists. So the two... In our armamentarium is cabergoline and bromocryptine. So cabergoline, the dose is 0.25 to 1 milligram. You can give it twice weekly. A bromocryptine, you can give 1.25 up to a ceiling dose of 7.5 milligrams BD. And then consider transfernoidal surgery if resistant to medical therapy or visual if you're compromised. Right? But remember that prolactinoma is the one uh, pituitary tumor which is amenable to being treated completely medically. All right. But however, you do want to know indications for treatment, which include infertility, galacteria, hypogonadism, related to osteoporosis, mass effect, and macroadenoma. The acromegaly, you give, that can only be solved really by transferoidal surgery. There are some drugs which we'll speak about in a forthcoming video. If it's Cushing disease, you go for transferoidal surgery. If it's TSH secreting, transferoidal surgery uh, is first line, but the cure rates are low. Consider octetide and treatment with antidiuretic medications as appropriate. Okay, if you're dealing with a non-functional pituitary adenoma, replace, replace any hormone deficiencies and consider transfernoidal surgery if symptomatic or has mass effect. But guys, today's mnemonic is the sequence in which the hormonal secretion is lost in the context of a compressive pituitary adenoma and the mnemonic is go look for the adenoma, please. God bless you and have a lovely day.